hi everyone and welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial i'm going to show you how to make this hanging macrame cat bed i made this one for a friend's birthday and it turned out really really cute so i'm super happy to share it with you all and i hope you enjoy it so you'll need some four millimeter macrame cord i'll have this one linked in the description box this is the one i use it's like a twisted braided cord so you'll need a lot of that You'll need some scissors, these are really sharp and I sell these on my Etsy shop and I'll have them linked in the description box as well. You'll need a tape measure. You'll need two 40cm metal rings, I'll have these linked down below as well, I just got them off Amazon. It doesn't matter what colour these are because they're going to get covered in cord anyway so you won't see the colour. You'll need 8 lots of 580cm lengths of cord. You'll need 2 lots of 980cm lengths. Yes, this is a very long length, but it's to wrap around the metal cords. 1 200cm length. 2 lots of 60cm lengths. You'll need 32 200cm lengths. These are optional, but I added in some wooden beads. So these are one and a half centimeters. I used four in total and I'll have them linked down below as well. And optional coffee. It always helps with a long project like this. So grab your eight lots of 580 centimeter lengths and find the middle of them. So it gets a bit tricky because the cords are much longer, but if you don't want to make the loop this way, you can just tie a knot so it creates a loop at the top, but I like doing it this way because I think it creates a really nice neat finish and it looks very professional. And grab the one lot of 200cm length and this is what we're going to use to create the hoop. So from the middle point I'm going to measure out about 10cm because in total I want the loop to be about 20cm. So half of that is 10 so go from the middle point measure 10 to the left and that's where we're going to start the hoop but I think mine actually ended up only being about 15 centimeters in total so it's entirely up to you how big you want to make this hoop. From the 10 centimeter mark I have wrapped the 200 centimeter cord around so I've left a very small tail like this and then I'm just pulling the rest underneath. Okay, so it's looped around the cords like this. Very simple. And now we are going to pass the bulk length of the cord over the short tail like this. So it goes in front of that. It's going to come underneath all of the cords. Pass it over all of the cords and then through this loop that we have created here. So essentially we are creating a lark's head knot. But this is just a way of doing it so you can create rows of lark's head knots. So pass that through there and then you're just going to pull it, adjust it and tighten it up so it looks like a nice neat knot. So that's the knot started. So now we're going to take the cord and we're going to bring it over just like this and then we're going to take it under and through the loop that we've created. So that's the first half of the lark's head knot. And then we're going to take the cords underneath all of the cords. We're going to bring the cord over and then through the loop that we created. Just like that. So that's the second lark's head knot created now. So we're just going to carry on doing this. So here we start the knot again. So we're going over and then under and through the loop. And then we will go under and then over and through the loop. So it's very easy once you get the hang of it, you just keep alternating going over through the loop and then under and through the loop. The tricky part is if you leave it, you just have to remember what knot you ended on. So you can see I just keep adjusting it, making sure all the knots are about the same. And then it will very slowly start to sort of curve around, as you can see it's starting to begin that now. So I'm getting like my tape measure and then I'm going to try and do this until it measures about 20 centimetres but I think mine only measured about 15 in the end. 
So just carry on doing that over and under through the loop knot until you have something that looks like this and you can see it's curved round and it will form a really lovely hoop. So mine was about 17ish centimeters. So it's up to you, but I quite like the look of that. You can see if you bring it together, it forms the perfect loop. So now grab one of the 60 centimeter lengths of cord and the two cords that are left from that Lark's head knot, we're just going to include in this and we are going to create a wrapping knot. So for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to show you how to make one using this red cord so you can see it a bit easier from the contrast. So we are going to grab the 60 centimeter length of cord. So this will be right at the bottom of those Lark's head knots. And we're gonna form this short tail here and this loop here. And then we've got this long tail here. So you'll start wrapping the long cord around and this will be right at the base of those Lark's head knots. So keep on wrapping until you've done about six or seven wraps. And then we're going to pass the long tail through the loop that's at the bottom. And then you pull on the short tail that's at the top and the loop will start to close. And then you're just going to pull it so that you can feel the cord and it's about halfway through the knot. Don't pull it all the way through as it might undo the knot. So that'll be a nice neat finish. So we're going to do that right at the bottom of the Lark's head knot using the 60 centimeter length of cord. So you can see I'm just creating that loop with the short tail at the top, just like that. So you can see why I showed you with the red cord because it's a bit easier to see if you don't understand the knot. And then I'm just starting my wraps right at the bottom of the Lark's head knot. Your cord won't be as long as the cord in this video. This was just a leftover cord that I wanted to use rather than waste. Your cord will be a lot shorter than this and you won't have too much cord wastage. You can see I'm pulling it until the cord's halfway through the knot. And then I like to split the cords and just pull them apart so it pushes the knot up and it makes it nice and tight. And then we can just snip off all the excess cords from that and any leftover cords from the Lark's head knot. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my pliers and just push the cords inside just to create a nice neat look. Right, so next up we are going to wrap the metal hoops. So we're going to grab one of the 40 centimeter hoops and one of the 980 centimeter length of cord. So I'm going to attach the cord to the hoop using a Lark's head knot. So I'm just folding it over like this on top of the hoop. And I'll fold the loop under the metal ring like that. And then we are going to pass all of the cord through the loop that we've created. So you can see I'm just making the loop a bit wider to make it easier as there is such a lot of cord. So I'm making it as wide as I can to make it nice and easy for myself. So we're just going to pass all of the cord through the loop just like that, including that small tail there. And then we're going to pull that to tighten it. And then that is the cord nice and secured onto the metal ring now. Right, so this is the exact same knot process as we used to create the loop at the start. So it's nice and easy. You should remember how to do it quite easily now. So I'm going to take the cord and I'm going to go over the metal ring and then underneath and through the loop. And then underneath the metal ring. And then over and through the loop. So yeah, the exact same knot process as we used to create the loop. So it's nice and easy. You can just shove some Netflix on or something in the background to keep you busy. That's exactly what I've done. It is a lot easier to do this if you can pin the metal ring down to your desk. I normally put my laptop on top of it just to keep it down so you can put some tension on it and pull nice and tight and it won't move around too much. So just continue doing your over and under pattern and 
keep smushing the knots together like that just to make sure they're nice and tight and then go around the whole of your ring like that so here you can see I've got my laptop on top of it and I've got the metal ring actually hanging off the desk as well uh, like you can see here I can just pass the cord over and under really easily and I can get it done really nice and quickly it's also quite a good idea for the rest of the cord if you tie it up so you don't have loose cords just flying everywhere so now I'm getting right to the end of the cord and I'm just trying to do as many knots as I can to make sure the cord is nice and tightly wrapped around the hoop. So here I just needed to use my pliers just to pull the last tail through. There we go. So that looks perfect and the hoop is now nice and covered and it looks really nice and neat. So now all that's left to do is repeat that exact same step with the other metal ring and the 980 centimeter length of cord. Repeat the exact same process until you have two hoops that look something like this. Perfect. So we can just ignore these cords for now, we're going to deal with them later. So now that the two hoops are covered, it's optional, you can take some fabric glue just to glue the ends just to make sure nothing else happens. So this is now day three of filming, so I decided to treat myself to a little coffee and a little dime egg. Right, so now we're going to go ahead and grab our cords with the loop again. And it's time to split this up into four groups of four cords. So I try and pick the cords that are laying close to each other from the bunch so it looks nice and neat. And we're going to be working on one set of the cords. So I'm going to lay the cords out so they're nice and flat. And then I'm taking my tape measure and from the bottom of the loop I'm going to measure out about 20 centimetres and that's where we're going to begin our square knots. So at that 20 centimetre mark I'm going to take the cord on the right. I'm going to bring that over the two middle cords like this. And then the first cord, the cord that's on the left, will go in front of that one behind the middle two and through this loop here just like that so I'm going to gently pull to tighten that but I'm also trying to keep this at the 20 centimeter mark so I'm just going to remeasure it and get it right about that 20 centimeter mark it doesn't have to be exact but this will be the benchmark for the other groups of chords and now I'm going to take the first chord take it over the middle two the fourth will go in front of that, behind the middle two, and through the loop. And that is one square knot complete, so it's a really easy knot to learn. And this knot will make up the majority of the cat bed as well. So pull that nice and tight to tighten it all up. And then we're going to repeat those exact same steps to create a second square knot. So we've got two square knots now, so we're going to create four in total. So add two more onto that. So now we've got four square knots here. I am going to add on a wooden bead, but of course this was optional. So if you're not doing this, you can just go ahead and skip this step. But I'm going to take the two middle cords first. I'm just going to fold over the end because it creates a sharper point to push through the wooden bead. And I'm just going to twist it on like that. So that is now threaded onto the two middle cords. And then I'm going to do the exact same with the two outer cords and put them inside the bead as well. Just like that, so all four cords are now inside the bead. So now we need to swap the cords around basically. So whatever cords were in the middle from the square knots at the top, they are now going to become the outer cords. And then the outer cords that were from the square knots at the top are now going to become the middle cords. So this is just so we don't have too much cord wastage. So you can see I'm now swapping them over as the outer cords use a lot more length than the middle cords. So you can see I've just tied the outer cords in a knot just to make it a bit easier for myself. And now we are going to create four square knots using that exact same method. Just like this, so it's nice and identical. And now I'm going to repeat those exact same steps on the other three groups of cords and using that first group as a benchmark for where the square knots should start 
just like this until you have four and they all start about the same height and they look nice and neat. Now it's time to attach the hoops onto the cords. Ignore these scuffs on the wall, we have a dog. <laughs> right, so I'm going to hang this up and then from the bottom of the square knots here, I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm measuring out about 15 centimeters and that's where we're going to attach the hoop. So we're going to create one square knot at that 15 centimeter mark. And then you can just go ahead and repeat that on all the other groups of cords. So to attach the hoop, we are going to take that square knot. We're going to take the two middle cords and the two outer cords like this. And we're going to pass the hoop through in between them. So the two middle cords will be in front of the hoop and the two outer cords will be behind the hoop. Just going to create one more square knot to secure the hoop in place. So it should look something like this. And then we are going to add the three groups in the exact same way, spreading them evenly across the hoop. And I like to try and cover up the hoop cords with one of those square knots. So you can see I'm making sure that the groups naturally lay next to each other. I'm not of crossing them over. So that's just an easy way to create the neatest look that you can. So you can see I'm creating that first square knot at the same height as that first group. Then I'm going to attach it to the hoop about a quarter of the way around. You can measure this as well if you want to be really even. So I'm just going to attach it in the exact same way by putting the outer two cords behind the loop and the two middle cords will stay in front of the hoop. And then we're just creating a square knot to secure it. And you can just do this roughly for now. Once all the cords are attached, we can go ahead and move them around to make sure it's nice and even. It just is easier if you can just attach the hoop quickly and then sort it out later. Again, I'm going to attach the other two cords now around the hoop. And as you can see, I'm trying to cover up the wrapping cord from the metal hoop. So I'm placing this over that so it will kind of hide it a bit. Sorry, it's so out of focus and I really didn't realise, but I hope you can still see what I'm doing. Just like that. And now I'm just attaching the last group. Perfect, and now it's time to grab the 32 lots of 200 centimetres and we're going to attach these around the hoop evenly using a lark's head knot. So we're going to do four sets of cords on each quarter of the hoop. So I'm taking one cord and I'm going about a quarter of the way in between those gaps and I'm passing the middle point over the hoop like this. I'm going to pass the two cords through the loop. And that's a lark's head knot, which is the most basic knot you can learn, but it's super, super easy. So I'm going to attach a second cord next to that one in the exact same way. So each quarter of the metal hoop will have eight cords split into four groups of two cords, if that makes sense. So I'm just moving that across. And then I did end up measuring it. So if you're using a 40 centimeter one, they should be about four centimeters apart. So I'm gonna add the next two about four centimeters apart from that first group. Just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach two more sets. So that is one quarter of the metal hoop done now. So with the remaining 24 lots of 200 centimeters, you can go ahead and fill out the hoop like you just done. Okay, so now that all of those cords are attached around the hoop and they're all kind of evenly spaced out as evenly as you can get them, it's now time to create one square knot on each set of those cords, apart from the cords that are coming from the loop. So just the cords that you've just added, create one square knot on top of them. So these ones, you don't create a square knot because they've already got one. So just the four in between those cords. Okay, so now that we've got a square knot on all of the cords, we can go ahead and create an alternating row of square knots now. So we're going to take two cords from one square knot and two cords from the next square knot like this. And we're gonna create a square knot using those cords now. 
and this is going to give a really pretty pattern as well to the cat bed but it's also going to make it nice and secure so i'm making them about three centimeters diagonally down from the first row so I'm taking the two leftover cords from one square knot and the two next cords from the next square knot and again creating one new square knot in line with that first square knot that we created. So I'm just going to continue going around doing this. We will include the cords that are coming from the main cords that are holding the hoop on as well. So you can see here I'm just including every cord around the hoop. And we're going to go ahead and create this second row of square knots. And now we're going to create another alternating row. So again, we're going to split the square knot cords up and create a new square knot in the middle. And we're going to make this about equal distance apart as that second row. So you can see we're getting this really nice diamond pattern shape. So continue doing that till you finish that row and then create another row of alternating square knots. So this will be the fourth row of square knots. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five square knot rows now. So I created another row after that fourth row. So mine measures about 15 centimeters from the top of the metal ring to the last square knot. So that's five square knot rows in total. Now it's time to add the other hoop onto the cat beds. So you're just going to take all of the cords inside of the hoop. Now the easiest way to show you how to attach this is using this dowel. So this dowel is going to be the hoop and these will be the cords from the square knot. Oh, I'm just tucking one cord out of the way and we're going to work on one cord at a time so I can show you easier. So basically we are going to take the first cord from the square knots like this. So we're going to bring that cord up and over like this and we're going to throw it behind just like that so you can pull that to make it nice and tight and then we're going to bring it up and over but this time towards the left throw it behind and then we're going to bring it through this loop here so it may look a bit confusing at first so i'm just going to show you again on the second cord so this is creating a double clove hitch knot so we're going to bring the cord up and over and then down towards the right And then I'm just going to pull that tight next to the other cord and then we're going to bring it up and over towards the left and then bring the cord through the loop here. So that is the exact knot that we're going to use on all of those cords coming from the square knots to attach to the second metal hoop. So I'm going to try and show you now. So you can see I'm taking one cord from the square knot and bringing it up and over down towards the right. And then I'm going to bring that cord up and over down towards the left. And then I'm going to bring it through this loop here. So it was very difficult to show you on this, which is why I thought it'd be easier to show you on the wooden dowel. So you can flick back easily to that clip just before this one, just to double check on how to do the knot. So I attached it randomly in about four places throughout the metal hoop, just so it was secure and I didn't have to keep holding it. And then I went back through and attached all of the cord using that knot. So it might be easier for you as well if you just tuck all the cords out of the way that you aren't using for now and then just bring one down at a time because there are a lot of cords and it can get a bit confusing. I'm just going to keep attaching all of the cords around the hoop using that method. And now we're going to take the last 60 centimeter length of cord and we're going to create another wrapping knot, but by gathering all of the cords at the bottom like this. So what you want to try and do is make sure that the wrapping knot is on level with the metal hoop. So that will give it as much tension as possible and be nice and tight and secure for the cat and hold the weight of the cat. So here I've just created the wrapping knot like this, but you can see I've got a lot of loose baggy cords. So the easiest way to fix that is to individually pull on each of the cords coming from that wrapping knot. This may take a lot of time, but it's actually quite satisfying once you start pulling on the cords that is like the baggiest and you're like, oh, yeah, that was the one. <laughs>
You can see I've got one last cord. Oh, that was nice. But I think I did end up going around again and pulling it so they become really nice and tight. Yeah, just like this. So that looks nice. You can see it's got a good amount of tension there, so it's going to hold the weight of the cat nicely. And then all that's left to do is to trim off the excess cords from that wrapping knot and then trim the bottom of your cat bed if you wanted. I actually left mine as is because I quite like the look of the cords hanging as they were all sort of different lengths and it wasn't too neat, too straight, you know, I quite like that natural look. So now I'm just going to go ahead and snip off the cords that were from the wrapping knots of the hoop. If you wanted you can go ahead and dab some glue on that. But yeah, I think I left mine like this because I quite like that look. And the cats could probably play with that as well, you know, if they wanted to, to play with the bottom of the cat bed, it would probably work out quite well. So yeah, that is the hanging macrame cat bed complete now. And I really hope you enjoyed following along this tutorial. It's my longest tutorial ever on YouTube and it took probably about a week to film. So I really hope you enjoy it. Please like, subscribe and comment if you can. And if you do make this, please be sure to tag me on Instagram at LunacraftsOnline because I'd really love to see it. And of course, I'd love to see all your little furry cat friends. So I really hope you enjoy it. If you could like, subscribe and comment, that'd really help me out and make my day. And as always, I really hope you have a lovely week. Bye.